everybody out there. I'm Garrett, and you're watching Living Bang Bang. Today we have the Yukar rifle, or the Jukar rifle, or whatever you want to call it. These guns are actually a fairly cheap gun. We find them at gun auctions all the time for around 100 bucks around here. And uh, I'm just going to let you look at this. It's uh, not a bad uh, reproduction of a later Hawken in reality. It has the full length stock does have a split right here with the brass in it but that's what keeps the price low no patch box or anything very small thin stock which is actually really uh, historically accurate as far as that goes back here like I said it's not historically accurate with the split but this is a cap lock and it's in 45 caliber some people consider these guns complete junk some people think that the barrels are the best barrels you can get as far as target shooting <clears throat> we shot this one quite a bit had a couple of them actually and the one thing we've always noticed is on both of them it's very easy to plug this bolster and sometimes you will get failures to fire but other than that it's a well balanced little gun and you know let's just load it up and take a few shots now since this is less than 50 boys are pointing out some jackrabbits back there but we're not hunting rabbits today boys since this is less than 50 caliber we're going to go ahead and use a 3f I believe this is a Grafton Sun 3F, Grafton Sun mix. And I'm gonna start with 40 grains because that's what my powder measure here holds, my little powder measure. Should probably shoot 60, we may try that a little later, but. All right, right down the bore, 40 grains. Just like that. Then we're going to take a patch, and we don't shoot much 45, so all I have here is 50 caliber patches. <clears throat> but we'll wet that with some fit you could use lube don't have any lube right now so we're going with a 0.18 patch and a 440 round ball and let's see how tight that is haven't shot one of these in a while so I'm not sure exactly how tight that's gonna wind up in should have brought my short starter did I bring my short starter Probably not. when you don't have your short starter you just got to make do with what you can find. Because that combination is pretty tight right there. Okay. That .18 pillow ticking is a little bit thick. So I've got some uh, what looks like .10 there. So I might try that next. All right, now I'm going to break out a CCI number 11. Cause that's what seems to fit this thing pretty good sorry my voice is cracking a little bit it's hot and dry out here all right so we're gonna go ahead and set the cap but anyway we don't know exactly where this one's hitting so i'm gonna take an offhand shot at 50 yards and we are gonna see where it goes 40 grains would appear that the up and down is just right just a hair to the right all right so we tried that now let's try a little bit thinner patch and i am gonna have to cut these because these are for a 69 caliber okay let's see 40 more grains oopsie spill a little Right down the bore. Wet this patch. Get this ramrod out of the way. This is not the correct ramrod, but it works. Alright, we will take. We we'll use our impromptu short starter here. Oh, that went down easier there, I could already tell. Get a patch knife out. You should always sharpen your patch knife, but that worked pretty good right there. All right, let's short start it. Oh, much better. I believe with a 440 ball, it's gonna like a 0.10 patching. Oh yeah, much better. 
and I don't think that'll hurt our accuracy any at all. All right, watch that target come back down out of the wind. That's more like it. I think I know where it's shooting now. I think I know what I did wrong. The V notch in this is not very fine whatsoever. And I was holding over there, kind of the sun was glaring on my sight, pulling me one way. And then the next time I overcorrected, it might not hurt to deepen that V notch a little bit because really it's just kind of an indention. It's not really even a notch. But now I know where we're hitting with it. Let's have some fun. Let's go over here with the U car and see if we can hit our main AR500. Just see how much 40 grains moves it around. <clears throat> you ready? Oh, it hits it pretty good, even with just 40 grains. Let's try another little trick here. I'm gonna go ahead and start loading 2F now because 3F's sometimes hard to come by, so give me that 2F. Let's try the 110 grain load. Now I know that's hotter than most people would ever shoot. Maybe hotter than you should shoot in this gun. Right, there we go. 110 grains, 2F. Then don't blow it all the way before it gets in the barrel. Lost a little bit. <laughs> that's a lot more ramrod sticking out from the last time. <clears throat> One thing I don't like about this gun is how deep that hammer nose is. <clears throat> it tends to catch caps up inside the hammer nose. Let's get that set. All right. 110 grains gonna go over here on Cowboy Bob. Let's see if she holds together. Ah, that was a thumper. Wasn't too bad though, about where I aimed. That might be a deer hunting load. Okay, 40 grains, a round ball. Let's go out to the 30 yard gong, see if we can hit it. Thirty yard gun. There we go. Yep, went well. 110 grains on these railroad plates. You know, 110 grains really does put the wallop down there down range. Without further ado, let's let Caleb shoot this thing. Caleb. guys that's all we got for the Ucar Spanish 45 caliber this one doesn't seem to shoot that straight could be me could be Caleb but usually it's not both of us uh, the wood is really nice looking on these I do like it I think that if you took the time to really sight one of these in and work a load up you could probably make a pretty good deer rifle out of it but anyway that's all we have so trust in God keep your powder dry bye <laughs>